What is your career dilemma? That's the question we ask and answer and address each week right here on That Career Dilemma Show. Hi, my name is Paul Madsen and I am your host and I am excited because this is episode number 37. Episode 37 of the program, and not too bad, Jeff. 37? That's, that's really, really great. And who's the show for? Jeff, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> Gee, thanks a lot. Uh, the show is for anyone in a career transition, someone who's job hunting, a self-employed person who wants to cast a bigger footprint with their business, or a small business person who would be uh, interested in growing incrementally as well. Mm -hmm. Just getting all sorts of good ideas. And you know what, Jeff? I don't do that myself. I do it through people like you. Uh -huh. I have stellar guests who come on and each week give a biographical background type of thing and then move on to uh, inspiration for the viewers. Make sense? Makes sense. Sounds I am good. so honored to have, uh, Jeff, uh, pronounce your last name for me. Coterba. Coterba, that's what I was thinking. And well, I the original pr uh, Czech pronunciation is Coterba. Okay. I have a little bit of a frog in my throat. No, 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 so, that makes but, two of us. So. But uh, our family, uh, cool. uh, we're, we're all from, you know, originally Czech, Czechoslovakia on both sides of the family. Okay, all right. And uh, we didn't have that E in there, so we bought a vowel. <laughs> it is Not cheap. Mailed away to, to Vanna, huh? And bought a vowel. Well, that's great. And so um, that, Jeff is, uh, I'm actually sad he's here because uh, we can spend the whole I have that effect on people. Yeah, you do, you do. <laughs> we, we could spend the whole program just talking about his background. It's that interesting. He's done, I call him a renaissance man. Yeah, your back, background, well, there we go. Yeah, this will be a fun one. The, uh, <laughs> the, you don't uh, know that yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, besides, Jeff came out in the snow and he's sick and I'm not feeling so good, so who knows what's gonna happen today. At any rate, uh, Jeff is a renaissance man from an art, arts and culture and job hustle uh, type of guy. The, the bottom line is, uh, I think he'll have a great uh, advice for our viewers uh, on some of those side things you might want to start out there, some of the ways to do some things on the side, because you've managed to hold a, a real job for a little while. And what is that? Yeah, I'm in, well, I'm uh, the editorial cartoonist for the Omaha World Herald, and I am in my 29th. 29th, yes. Yeah. Uh, where were you in 19 uh, whatever? It started in 1989. But no, I was I was uh, always doing the side hustle thing before that was even a phrase. My okay. my son, uh, who is an entrepreneur and has uh, he he keeps me up to speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice know, to have me to nice to have that for guys our age. Get yeah, into social so media, the technology, and, yeah. right? And you know, and, uh, but a lot of these things that we now have terms for, like you know, doing your side, side hustle. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that, and I don't say that in any you know self congratulatory no, way, no. but I just did what it, what I had to do, and they're you know learning to become a cartoonist uh, and getting a cartooning job. I think can re uh, people who do all sorts of things can relate to that because I had to make my own path. I could not go. I took art classes and journalism did, classes. Did you have a, I a, eyes designed on getting a cartoonist job? I, I, I did. Because I, there's not that many of those around. I mean, I grew up, I never heard of a job where it's right. a cartoonist. Right, and there's no easy, there, there, there wasn't then, and there really, there might be a little bit more now if you want to get into animation, and you go to yeah. animation school, and then hopefully sure. work for Disney or Pixar. But when I was starting out, you know, where are you going to learn to do that? And you yeah, can't get a yeah. degree in political cartooning. But I, knew, <laughs> I, knew from, I knew from an early age when I was when I was a kid that I wanted to do something with art. And okay. it was in Well, in yeah, you were drawing being, in high school, right? Yeah, I was drawing when I was four and five years old. Yeah, right. As a lot of kids do. Did, did, but did I had, you have a political twist in, when you were five? <laughs> no, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, I didn't. And uh, I didn't... Um, I'm teasing. No, that's funny. <laughs> but, you know, it's funny because uh, I... I I don't consider myself like a, a political insider, and in fact, I don't. I don't care for politics mm -hmm. now right. either, which I think makes right. me a better political cartoonist. Probably, you have your, your view from the view from the edge. Rather yeah, yeah, than exactly. exactly. In, the, in the middle of it. Yeah, well, that's great. Yeah. So, 29 years, World Herald political cartoonist. Um, I mean, they actually had a job, and they were recruiting for a cartoonist. You know, the the, the job had been dormant for uh, oh, eight or nine yeah. years. Uh, I'm the fifth. Fifth cartoonist in the World Herald's history, wow. and um, my uh, the, my predecessor Ed Fisher was a mentor of mine when I was in high school. Oh boy! And it took a lot of uh, you know knocking on the door and trial and error and working at other things. So I was 
you know, I had all sorts of jobs from bagging groceries to, you know, being a janitor, uh, playing, you know, playing in bands and things like that, and doing a lot of freelance work for, like, you know, almost no money. You're always a solopreneur uh, again before the term ever became popular. Sure, sure. But you do, you know, I followed my dreams. I paid, you know, I was paying my bills. I was, you know, had a, uh, a, a child and, you know, and I had to do, you know, all the responsible things. So by day I was, um, you know, bagging groceries at yeah. a local grocery store sure, and yeah. then staying up till two, three, four in the morning, you know, <laughs> Drawing, drawing yeah, falling well. asleep at my drawing table, <laughs> uh, but you know, no one, you know, I, like I, I'm one of those people that if you say you can't do it, then that's going to inspire me to right, want to prove you right, wrong. Right. And it just never occurred to me that failure was an option. I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen on the other side of that. But I would even go uh, to towns that were big enough, to, with the, that had a big enough newspaper that didn't have a cartoonist. And I would like sleep on couches and draw cartoons for that local paper wow. <laughs> and then go in and, you know, just whatever wow. I could do to try to try to get a cartoon you're, job. You're trying to hustle up a job doing that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and drawing cartoons about their local politics yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, not knowing that I was offending the editor. Yeah, yeah exactly, was, exactly. I drew a, what just happened in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> I drew and a so cartoon the about the, the paper were probably publisher's politics friend. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> slept on a waterbed in November, that, a waterbed that had no heater. Oh boy, so sure, upstairs. Sure. Not so good. not good. The kind of things you do. Yeah, plugged it because they knew you were coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a story in itself. That. Yeah, yeah, maybe they did that, right? <laughs> I mean, you you drove around. How, how big an area? Look, hustling up this kind of a job. Well, I mean, I was doing that in the, in the region, places I could drive easily to. But yeah. I was certainly, you know, I was drawing sports cartoons uh, for the Kansas City Star. Before this is pre-internet, so I was yeah. actually getting yeah. an actual Kansas City Star in my in my mailbox, mailbox. two days yeah. later, yeah. and then uh, and then drawing cartoons. But back, back then, but we you didn't just have knew this. you you knew you wanted to be a cartoonist yeah. for a newspaper. Yeah. At what age? Uh, five. five. Really? Yeah. I grew wow. up. I grew up with the uh, love for newspapers. My uncle. Mm -hmm. Was a syndicated uh, columnist for the Washington Post and died uh, just after I was born. But I heard all these stories about sure. how we covered the Kennedys and the wow. space program. How about that? Werner von Braun. And, and so, yeah. You know, there was this romance to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what an idyllic situation. And then uh, combining your interest in art with, with that. And, yeah. And, and there you are. But uh, many years, it took, how long did it take you then after all the couches and the, the rural visits <laughs> to get your. Um, Get your job. Yeah, and uh, after I, uh, by the way, I have Tourette syndrome, uh, which is a whole other facet another to show. creativity. Uh, well, another show. But it, but there is a connection between that and, and creativity, and, and yes. so if I'm a little twitchy. That's that's why. But you know, when I seriously started, you know, looking for a cartooning job, um, getting into the profession after high school, and I certainly took lots of journalism and art in college, but I was actively seeking out, you know, different kinds of things I could be doing. Uh, it was, you know, eight or nine years yeah. before I landed a full-time job. Yeah. Uh, it was four or five years when I landed a part-time job with the you know, drawing sports cartoons. And that was for who? Uh, the Kansas City Star. Okay. Yeah, that's right. okay. And then I Got became self-syndicated. And um, in fact, I, uh, I, sent out these <laughs> I sent out these brochures. I had like no money mm -hmm. and I had these brochures to become syndicated. And back when you did it with the mail, yeah, yeah, I had like eighty dollars <laughs> to my name. That was all I had, and I yeah. put, put it, it on all postage. Over, yeah, and I got a got a call from the Los Angeles Times. Really? And I had been reading this. Uh, a friend you of mine. You have to include uh, copies of your work then, or not? Yeah, it was it was a whole syndication package. Oh, like, okay. hey, you can oh, syndicate. Okay. You can buy Caterva Sports cartoons sure. for X amount of dollars. You know, but the idea of syndication is that you gain. You you know each paper buys it. Cheaply, with the idea that you're buying, you're selling it to several papers. Right. And I had zero sales right. capability, and right. <laughs> I'm an introvert. I'm yeah. shy. I'm afraid. And, you know, whatever. <laughs> and a friend of mine. Came I don't in, know about that. No, uh, I, I shy you, introvert. It's all true. Okay. So um, <laughs> I've had to overcome all of that. But a friend of mine gave me this book on sales, and I had no idea what I was doing. So I get this get this voicemail from the you know my recording machine, and yeah. it's from the Los Angeles Times, and I'm like, oh my. This is amazing. Yeah. 
and I called them back and I started using these sales techniques. Oh no. Like huh. they were they were throwing out a number. I said, Well, we're close. <laughs> and they're like, Look, we're offering X amount of dollars. I'm like, There's I'll take it. Yeah. It's Los <laughs> in that I'll, in, I'll, in, I'll give up. In landing the Los Angeles Times opened up Oh yeah. Yeah. All yeah. these doors. He said, Boy, me. you should pay us to be in this thing, right? <laughs> right. So then I you know, it was easy for me when I was contacting the other newspapers to say you know, the Los Angeles Times is using my work, you know. But, yeah, but, yeah. But That's to get to that point, builder, sure. I had spent many, 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 many sleepless nights over years to get to the point oh, where yeah. my work was good enough to appear oh. in the Times. Talk about paying the price. I know, I mean, viewers should uh, relate to that story. I mean, today we are so instant gratification. We right. want it now. Right. You know, uh, I've heard of millennials taking jobs and... And if they don't like the job, they're quitting by noon. Right, right. <laughs> you know, the, not, picture that versus, uh, you know, eight or nine years of sleeping in his car right. and trial, honing his task and so on. I would say it's not, I mean, I would say that there were a lot of, also a lot of really hardworking millennials. And there are a lot oh, of, I'm not, not no, 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 I, I have guys two or are, three of them at home, yeah. There are guys, are, uh, people our age who, yeah. who they talk, they talk a big game, like, oh, yeah. one day, yeah. one day, yeah. when, when is when that is gonna, it? Yeah. like, what are you doing today? And, you know, you're lounging on your, on your couch, and, and, and nothing wrong with that, but, yeah. like, you gotta just, you gotta, it's you gotta about just, the hustle, isn't you it? Gotta, it is about that, you gotta get out there and do it right now, well, and, and I, stop complaining. Absolutely, I uh, led a class this morning uh, <laughs> for uh, my, the, what I teach at Metropolitan Community College, and, uh, there were several excellent people there who wanted to develop their side hustle. And, they, you know, I, every, every time I lead the course, I see this. There's the, I'm going to do this, or I've studied that, I've researched this, and right. I'm planning on that, and I think I want to do this. And, uh, you know, my, my job is to use my foot in those classes and kick them in yep. the rear and yep. say, yep. just do something. Yep. Exactly. You did something. You jumped in your car and went to small towns trying to hustle up some of these uh, uh, mm -hmm. newspaper people. And that, that's a really impressive story. So it took you, you know, he was an overnight success in what, 20 years? <laughs> after nine years to get into yeah. the business? <laughs> well, how I'm many people are you right now? Uh, I'm syndicated worldwide uh, to over 850. 800? Oh, baby. Yeah. Now, that means the... the, uh, the so I get, that means I get hate mail from around the world. From all over the place, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet. So when I see... I know, get a lot of fan mail, but it's yeah. the hate mail. Well, I'm sure you get a lot about. of fan mail, because yeah. your stuff is good. Yeah. Um, uh, if I, the, paper, the, the cartoon I see in the World Herald, yeah. that's the same one that's in Los Angeles Times and in the <laughs> Peking Press or whatever? Yeah, the same day. yeah so uh, the, the same it, day, but a few soon. days later. Sure, it's the, the anything that, that I'm drawing for the World Herald that isn't uh, specifically local, that isn't oh, Omaha, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't so make sense uh, to do some bash on rickets or something. You sure, know? sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. Occasionally, something like that will play elsewhere but yeah, yeah but if it's a cartoon on you know on uh, Russia or yeah, North yeah. Korea or you know president then that, well that I just I marvel at cartoonists we, I just uh, like at you uh, I mean to to have the mind that can uh, do the satirical approach or the the comedic approach or the the observation part of it yeah. and the art part of it all that together um, I'm I'm gonna keep trying to enter that uh, Oh, the, the contest, the caption, caption contest. contest, and I, I'd entered one, but I was too late, and so I had the winner. I knew it, but I was just too late getting it in there. So I got to keep trying. So keep that up. That's. Are you the judge, soul? I, 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 I am. Well, I I I, uh, I I whittle it down, and then I'll go to my uh, my boss uh, okay. to kind yeah. of help me find a little bit of yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, great story. Again, um, viewers, take note. Eight, nine years to get where he wanted. Always knew what he wanted to do. Got himself a real job doing that, and that's pretty exciting stuff. Um, we're going to get into uh, some of the other things uh, that you do um, as well here, um, even though that we could talk all day about the first one, mm. um, right after this message uh, from a sponsor. And that is that um, on onqmarketing.com is where you go to get found on a Google search. Jeff over there will help you out with uh, getting uh, landed on, on a good position with Google. So check out onqmarketing.com. And um, I'll talk about my Metro stuff at the end of the show. And we're, we're back with Jeff. And um, Jeff, what does the word side hustle mean to you? You've only got about nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, side hustle. Yeah, I have. Uh, you know, every, yeah, you're right. It's. Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I only have 24 hours. I you must have a longer day than me. Oh or something. man, I don't know. That time. It is, of course, time time management that's that's yeah. difficult. So I, I do like. I'm not always successful at it, but there are little things that I do 
to try to free up free up time. So well, before we get in that, yeah. just in case somebody doesn't know, um, tell us some of those uh, some of those side hustles. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I uh, uh, gosh, I have a, a, a band called Prairie Cats. Prairie it's, Cats uh, mm -hmm. stuff, uh, original swing, jump blues. Uh, Music, uh, mostly, uh, it's almost all original work. Yeah, uh, much I of saw which you made I've, your own some I've written, albums or something like that. Yeah, yeah we've uh, toured, we've played uh, the Derby in Los Angeles, wow. uh, South by Southwest, and uh, we played at the uh, World Trade Center in New York uh, just a few weeks before 9 11. Wow. And, so this um, isn't just some garage hobby weekend thing. No, you know? no. I mean, how much time do you put into this? Uh, well, le less time now. Uh, uh, so we're, we're not touring like we were before. We right. were. We were playing quite a bit. And That's tough with a full-time job. It's tough with a full-time <laughs> job and, and uh, you know, late nights and all that oh, sort man. of thing. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, I do, um, I write and I've- Tell uh, us about uh, your books. Published- uh, And you didn't bring your books along. Well, you know. They're probably I, in the library uh, over here. Maybe. Yeah, uh, there. I had a, a mem memoir published with Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Uh, uh, that gets into a lot of the stuff about, you know, my inspiration and the things that, the challenges and wanting to, Follow my dreams, and uh, I have a, a cartoon collection the World Herald put out. It's a biography type of thing. It thing? is, yes. The, the memoir. Inklings You're way too young to have a memoir. Well, you know, you can <laughs> tell my memoirs. So, or it's a memoir. My life so far. Or something yeah, it, 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 pretty much. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I'm approaching that. Uh, well. Uh, years old, and I call it midlife, you know, and that means I'm going to live to be a hundred and something. <laughs> so uh, my life so far, also anyway. My life so far, and then uh, the World Herald uh, uh, put out a uh, collection of my cartoons um, a few years ago to celebrate my 25th anniversary at the paper, and that was tough because at that point I'd already driven, uh, driven, I'd already drawn something like 7,500 cartoons, and we wow. had to whittle that oh, down man. to a couple hundred. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, I mean, I play, you know, all kinds of other kinds of music, and um, I do other. Did sorts you mention of drawing in too? Is that the name of that? Uh, uh, draw, yeah, the, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So, okay. and then, and then we're doing these videos now at the World Herald. Ray Mines, uh, who uh, came to us from uh, television, and is expanding our video department. Um, oh yeah. I do yeah. a weekly video where I go beyond uh, a particular cartoon and maybe get into. Uh, what the creative process was, or maybe an offshoot from that cartoon. So uh, recently I did one on uh, the Russian trolls, and then I talked a little bit about some of my experiences having been to Ukraine and Russia, oh, wow. and, and I, I kind of tie it together. Bill, uh, you tie it into your cartoons? Yeah. I have not actually yeah. seen your videos. Yeah, yeah, that that's on yeah. Omaha.com Omaha yeah, every week, and that's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. yeah, and well, then... That's, well, that's, that's cool that the... Newspaper is getting into more of a multimedia type of thing. It probably has to, and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so they're oh. they're they're taking you. Down. You're going. What? I don't know if you guys led them there. Or they led you there. Well, but it's kind it of a, matter. Yeah, yeah. And we're and, and the, the the cool thing is we're using Prairie Cat music because it's oh, no royal, royalty free. Oh, get out of town. <laughs> so yeah. to, are you the vocalist or? You I, I am, but I don't have to pay anybody. No, it's my yeah, song, yeah. So That's awesome. you know that works out well. But oh, and, and this other oh, issue, I used to charge them. Well, I'd be charging my. So well, like come the, out of your department's yeah, yeah, like that. that. <laughs> so, but no, but uh, you know the time thing is a challenge, and I know it's something where you know yeah. I hear people all the time saying, "Oh, I'm crazy busy." Yeah, I say that all the time too, and I I do think that. So what's the answer? Well, I do think there are little things you can do. For example, uh, I mean, I'm currently don't live within walking distance of the paper, but for a few years I did, and. Yeah. Um, Walking is a form of meditation, sure. and it's a way for me to let the creative juices flow. So yeah, I'm, I'm killing yeah. a couple of birds with one stone. I'm I try to get in ten thousand steps a day. I don't always do that, right? Or try to get to the gym. But if I'm walking, I'm getting in exercise, right? And so I'm using my body. I'm giving myself time to think. Mm -hmm. uh, when I gave a TED, I gave a TEDx talk a year ago, oh, good. and I rehearsed it during my walk back and yeah. forth. To work, yeah, and people thought I was talking to myself. <laughs> I, I wore my earbuds, yeah. and they thought I was on the phone. Yeah, so there, I'm That's getting right. in exercise. Yeah. I'm rehearsing. I, I've done that with rehearsing songs that I'm writing. Sure. I will sing the song, sure. the lyric, over and over and over again. Yeah. So that's just one. I, and I've heard that before. Thing. That physical activity helps the creative process. Right. And I agree with that 100. percent If you're dormant, sitting there staring at the TV, 
And that's a bad environment. Right, and yeah, even, right, and yeah. yeah, and if I go to the gym, which I do, I'll, then that's when maybe I'll observe, uh, I don't, uh, I don't watch a lot of television news, but I will then use that time to watch some TV news, just yeah. to get caught yeah. up. Well, in, in your, in your world, you have to have, see what people are saying about things. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Good. Right. So that's, uh, that, that's great advice. Uh, I think if you're looking to have a, a business or a, a, an endeavor or a side gig or whatever in the um, uh, creative world, so whether it's writing, whether it's uh, maybe acting, maybe it's uh, drawing, art, whatever the case, um, give yourself some recharge time, right? I mm -hmm. mean, to give, there, there's so much you know, output and so much input with the phones and, and just so much data going yep. into us. We need to have that time to let the body recharge like a rechargeable battery, I think, to be able to, to make something happen. So check your sources, check your, check your downtown. I like that. Walking is meditation. I got to write that one down. I think that's great. My, my cousin, who is an artist in Boston years ago, told me, uh, gave me a term, fertile indolence. To be indolent sounds to be lazy or whatever. Fertile indolence means mm -hmm. that you do need those, as you just said, you need downtime to recharge mm -hmm. and so you do have to give yourself that time I don't give myself enough yeah, time well, not with all and some people, you're doing. Yeah. some people give themselves too much fertile yeah. and then they're just I know, I know those people <laughs> and I don't mean to criticize no, but like no. but if you have a dream if you have a goal like what's stopping you from would you at least if you didn't fail would you at least rather try yeah yeah and have yeah, regrets yeah. well like I said yeah kick those people get them into action get them trying we learned uh, I heard recently the whole thing about fail faster Mm -hmm. If you get out and try and, stuff, you know, it's, it's not a failure, it's an education. Absolutely. Because guess what? I, I got stopped here. Well, then I'm going to go this way, right? And you've had that a thousand times and you're trying to get the job. Yep. And how about getting the gigs for your band? How did that happen? You know, a lot of knocking on doors and um, I was managing the band for many years oh, until I finally got <laughs> smart and hired a friend of mine who's an excellent okay. manager. Yeah. But, so yeah, a lot of knocking on doors sure. and... Um, you know, it was word of mouth back in the back in the day. So uh, okay. yeah. And Tell us briefly of, about. I'm gonna move on. Tell yeah. us briefly about your film work. About your. Uh, oh. Uh, are you working on any other books right now or anything? Uh, I'm always working. I've got a couple He's couple a writer, other things but... I'm working on, and uh, yeah, that I've uh, that are that are been brewing, and um, you know, sometimes I'll find if I if I get stuck on one thing. I, it's good to just push through and keep working on it. Sure. Sometimes it's good to put it aside and work, but rather than just watching TV, I'll work on the other thing. Yeah, yeah. And one thing might feed into the other thing that I was working okay. on. You just never know what the connections. Related, what the connections you get. You know, absolutely. But yeah, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. No, I've been. I've been. I, well, I was in a documentary about Tourette syndrome called Voluntary Gestures. But no, I've been. I've interested. I. I was. I, I was cut from a scene with I think you yeah, were you're in Alexander Payne. Yeah, yeah, I was I was I was in the background of a scene with Jack Nicholson and yeah. he, and he says that, that that footage is somewhere in a storage oh, it, unit and it's, I it's never not it evaporated into digital heaven. But no, but it didn't even make the director's cut. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> great, you great. know, so and you know Alexander Payne? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. You know, bit, you know, like, yeah, we, and we, you were so, oh, a cartoon of yours was used in election, the movie election. In the movie election. In, in the movie election. Yep, yep. And I've had uh, some cartoons in space. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. We, uh, tell tell them what that means. Yeah. So uh, because well, you know Clay Clayton. Yeah. I I, yeah, I I met Clay Anderson uh, over email when he wrote to me from the International Space Station, oh, wow. which uh, in 2007 was mind blowing. That is. I mind think blowing. nowadays I think. Maybe people yeah. wouldn't be as impressed, but it, now, now it, people are sending cars into space. Or now that is, <laughs> that is exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for bringing me down. No, 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 no. no. Sorry. No. <laughs> Cartoons and now just cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Start so, car, yeah. yeah. So Same he. Sort of word, right? But okay. we became friends that way, mm -hmm. and then when he uh, went back into space on Discovery, he asked if I would draw a couple of cartoons that he could actually physical cartoons he could take on board. And well, I think it's safe to say launch. you are the most circulated, most broadly uh, well, circulated cartoonist. I, because uh, it's not just about the internet in the world. Yours have been up they, in the space They've been in the space. Yeah, no, so they, cool. it was pretty cool. So that's that's kind of a, well, we got to kind of boil this down. I mean, yeah. you, we, we could talk all day about your very interesting background. I want to get down to what advice you have for yeah. our viewers who are interested in creating a side hustle. Maybe they don't know what direction to go. They don't know what the first step is. Yep. They don't know which talent they have that they should harvest. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you've done several different genres and things. What advice do you have to Jane Doe, John Doe, 
to, to get moving forward on, on their creative endeavors. Yeah, and you know, okay, so you know, you might look at this in a, in a spiritual way. You can look at it however you like, but I do think you know, as much as we've been talking about hustling and working and all of that, it is important to have quiet time, have alone time, to just be quiet with yourself and listen to yourself. Listen to if you are spiritual, you have a spiritual practice. You know, listen to the to that other voice. Listen to um, what is calling you. What is in your heart? What is that thing that has always, like, in the back of your mind, you've thought about? Mm -hmm. And I, I truly believe that we are all creative in some way. We may not all be artists, but maybe, you yeah. know, we're we're you know, cake. I know people who are making amazing baked goods and yeah. chocolates. Yeah. And you know, whatever that is. And to, to so find find that voice inside, um, and, and I, then I, I saw it uh, recently that some, someone said something like, um, "What made the time pass rapidly as a child?" Mm. You know, you kind of you almost remind me of that when you talk yeah. about going in, going deep, going inner, meditating, thinking back. Yeah, well, I mean, kids. Life. Well, you know, just speaking of, speaking of that, I mean, kids are too scheduled. I mean, oh, I, and and <laughs> I, I think it's important for kids to be bored. Yeah. And to like to go figure it out and right. like oh that's when they're that's when they yeah. develop their imagination. Yeah. That's, so oh, here here. Yeah. yeah yeah. And so and then as far as like oh gosh okay here's this dream I have I don't uh, what do I do do I have to go to do I have to go to college. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, if you're going to be a nuclear scientist, you're probably going to have to go to school. We want our doctors to have been to medical school. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I am not a graduate of college. Yeah. I attended, but yeah. I still haven't finished. Um, yeah. And I do think it's extremely valuable uh, if that is your path. It's mm -hmm. not for everyone. Right. And right. you can figure out your own path. You can right. maybe take some classes. Right. Or you can seek others out who do what you do. Find successful people. Okay. And don't, don't ask for a job. But my thing is... Ask if they can give you 15 minutes where you can just ask them for some advice. Yeah. And Good. more often than not, people are kind. People like to help, don't people they? People love that. I yeah. think, and I found that in cartooning and in music, sure, sometimes people are jealous or they are, they are put off by that. Most of the time, uh, they're very they, helpful. They don't really view it as competition. They view it as uh, it's healthy. The, the community, you know, it's we're it, helping right. everybody because everybody started somewhere. I mean, uh, right. I, uh, I always get the kick out of, uh, is it Mike Hunt, um, the edit editor of uh, Ron Howard's films, Lives oh, in Omaha. Oh, yeah, Mike Hill. Well, I'm sorry. Hill? Hill, Hill. Yeah, yeah. Hunt, yeah. And he, uh, um, he and his buddy went out to California, and they're just moving boxes around in, uh, in, in Hollywood and the set and stuff like that. And then they're in the right place at the right time where some old guard editor dude took him under his wing, and then all of a sudden... Ron Howard was on the up, and, yeah. you know, in like a thirty-year marriage there or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah. And the Oscar and all that kind of stuff. But you know that, and you bring up a good point though. It is sort of about being at the right place at the right time. But you got to put yourself there. You right? have to put yourself there. You have to create your own luck. Yeah. Beautiful. And if you're trying, if you're putting yourself out there, and you know, you you never know when you're going to make a connection with someone, or you're going to go to someone and say, "Hey, can I just, you know, can I ask you for fifteen minutes? Just pick your brain. What would you do for me?" And you never know. That person might say, "Hey." I know a guy yeah. who, you know, whatever. You just people you are helpful. Never know. People are helpful, yeah. Yeah. and especially in the Midwest, you know, it just works yeah. that way. So, um, to wrap up, uh, give us this, um, that's great advice. Uh, tell us about what books you have available, where people can get them. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, music Inc as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, Inklings, uh, the memoir. Uh, it's. Uh, I think you can still probably pick it up at Bookworm. It's uh, available nationally, and uh, you can certainly buy it on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, uh, cartoon collection, uh, you can buy through the World Herald or just go down to the lobby. And if you want a copy, I will happily sign it. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And down, down Omaha. Right? Yep. And um, you can find Prairie Cats online. Okay. Uh, we have physical CDs. Uh, we're playing. Really? The next okay. show is at Ozone Lounge on March 8th. And Ozone Lounge, March 8th. At Thursday, March 8th. And I love playing there for a lot of reasons. And they, it's a great venue, great sound system. We play at seven o'clock. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice for guys our age. Done by nine thirty. <laughs> I'm in bed in my jammies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I'm, I'm going to do other stuff. Yeah, but, I'm sure you are. Yeah. But it's uh, and there's no cover and it's all ages. They have great food. Also March eighth. Yep. And, okay. And we can we sell CDs there and uh, and and I you know I just I I, I encourage people to. Yeah. 
go to <coughs> Omaha, Omaha.com, and, and whether you're subscribing to the paper or you know physical paper or digitally or both, but this is a time more than ever when we need good journalism, and good journalism yeah. e e e needs support. And it doesn't, you know, newspapers don't grow on trees. Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but trees, yeah. you know, but but uh, it, it you know, uh, there's this mindset out there that you know, well, we should get everything for free. But yeah. my gosh, we have to pay so much going into that. No, there is huge. so much. Going you know, all you have to do it. is drive past that the the. the whatever you call it, the manufacturing, the, yep. the print, print sure, facility. Sure, yeah. that is huge, yeah. <laughs> huge. Well, to wrap things up, I just want to summarize a little bit uh, some of the wisdom that Jeff has given us today, <laughs> uh, um, uh, a life well living. And uh, first of all, hustle. Um, realize it took him eight or nine years to land the dream job that he's always saw himself doing. So make, make, make sure you're not in it for the short haul. Make sure you're going for the big picture. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I'm taking away big time is uh, the, the quiet time, that creative process. If you're in, interested in some kind of creative industry, creative side gig, creative full-time job, make sure you have some quiet time. Jeff got some from uh, his walking, from meditation. People are overscheduled, and I agree with that. And adults, too, don't, not just kids. I mean, I see kids going from thing to thing to thing, and I love what you said about let them get bored and let them figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. So even for adults, you know, turn off the tube. Listen to yourself. Listen to that inner voice. That's that's great advice. So, um, uh, lastly, get mentors. Uh, not lastly, but getting mentors. People love to help. Don't feel. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be a pest. Um, but you know, offer to give them something or be helpful to them as well. And usually, people are, are very helpful, especially yeah. especially in this world. Yep. Um, you know. Lastly, create your own luck. Um, you know, Jeff didn't just sit and wait for a cartooning job to come his way. Didn't wait for these gigs on the band. Didn't wait for the, the book to write itself. He went out and put himself in the right places at the right times and uh, made it happen for himself. Also, his band appears at the Ozone, March 8th, um, 7 o'clock p.m., Prairie Cats. Prairie Cats. That's right. Com. That's, uh, yep, yep. Okay, yep. very good. Omaha. Facebook and all Omaha. that. Omaha.com. Omaha. Omaha. Absolutely. The, for the paper and the subscription and some great cartoons. And my videos. And your videos, yes, I got yeah. to check that out now. So, uh, any last parting words, Jeff? Uh, no, this is fun, I, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, uh, I I learned a little, a lot actually about myself. Talking uh, about talking it. About well, this, so. that's yeah, the, this I kind of held up a mirror there. That's, yeah, you did. And that's yeah, what it's yeah. about. Well, I recognize talent, I've seen you at uh, film festivals, I you know, studied, uh, not studied, but read, read the cartoons and thanks. love all that and so I was just, Really honored that you'd be a guest okay. today and come out in the snow and you're not feeling so hot. And I'm honored to have been here. I'm honored to have had you. Thanks. So uh, uh, remember my classes coming up, uh, Metropolitan Community College. We'll see a graphic on that after, after the show. And um, Paul Madsen and Jeff saying over and out, we'll see you next week.